Good morning, my Real News Media TV family. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning, and I'm wishing for everyone a wonderful and a productive day. And in the news this morning for April 11, 2024, curfew extended in St. Elizabeth community. Police are reporting that a curfew in the St. Elizabeth community of Vineyard near Black River has been extended by 48 hours. Head of the St. Elizabeth Police, Deputy Superintendent Coleridge Minto, confirmed that the curfew, which was originally set to end on Wednesday, is now scheduled to end on Friday at 6 p.m. In a release on Monday, Minto said Vineyard is currently experiencing an upsurge in violence resulting in murders and shootings. On Saturday, March 2, 2024, about 8.50 p.m., at the Buckhead Shop Dougal Road, Vineyard District, St. Elizabeth, Kevin Williams O.C. Dino, auto body repairman of Dougal Road, Vineyard District, St. Elizabeth, was shot and killed once another man was shot and injured. Additionally, on Friday, March 28, 2024, about 10 p.m., men fired at a group of men at a Dandon shop, Vineyard District, St. Elizabeth, which resulted in one person sustaining gunshot wounds. There have been several other cases of shootings in recent months, which has caused the tension between rival groups, a statement from the St. Elizabeth Police leadership read in part. Police said that based on their intelligence, the tension level in Vineyard is high due to the recent murder as also a high level of threat of reprisal. St. Catherine Mann charged for alleged rape of mentally ill woman remanded. A St. Catherine man accused of the alleged rape and abduction of a mentally ill woman was on Wednesday remanded in the parish court at Linstead. Nicholas Barnett, who is also charged with a buggery, grievous sexual assault, and unlawful wounding, was ordered to return to court on May 15, when the matter will again be mentioned. The alleged incident happened in Linstead on Saturday, March 30. It is being alleged that the accused, while armed with a machete, entered the woman's house took her into nearby bushes and sexually assaulted her. It is further alleged that the man then used a machete to slap the woman on the head, causing a cut to her face. Following the alleged ordeal, the man fled. A report was made to the police and the accused was subsequently arrested. He was later charged. Two policemen and the prisoners injured in St. Anne crash. Two police officers and the two prisoners were injured in a motor vehicle crash early Wednesday morning in St. Anne. Reports indicate that about 8.30 a.m., a service vehicle assigned to the Hanover Police Division was en route to Kingston with the two prisoners aboard when on reaching a section of the runaway Bay Main Road, the driver lost the control of the vehicle on the wet surface. The service vehicle crashed into a wall, coming to a halt beside a bus stop. The vehicle was extensively damaged. The injured policemen and the prisoners were assisted to St. Anne's Bay Regional Hospital, where they were treated for their injuries. They were later released. NWA criticized for not doing more to help reduce road crashes. Vice Chair of the National Road Safety Council, Dr. Lucien Jones, is taking the agency responsible for maintaining Jamaica's main roads to task for its lack of response to recommendations to reduce crashes. Dr. Jones says the National Works Agency was approached to fix road defects following an island-wide survey, but he says the feedback was less than satisfactory. One of the challenges we, we face as a council is persuading um, agencies to do the work that we think they ought to be doing. For example, the police went around the entire island identifying those spots that you spoke about, mm -hmm. where you have poor markings, where you have potholes, where the sand is not sufficient. And we approach National Works Agency. Until this day, we can't get them tapped. Their answer, they don't have any money. Yes, they don't have any money, but you need to find the money because these things are urgent. When you have 10 people dying in the first, the first four days of April, that's a national crisis. Money needs to be found from somewhere. Up to Tuesday, there were 119 root fatalities, just slightly down from the 124 recorded over the same period last year. Corporate area taxi operators livid over delayed fare increase. Disgruntled bus and the taxi operators are still up in arms over the government's decision to delay the 16% increase for bus and the taxi fares. 
The increase was due on April 1, but the government served a notice that the fare increase would be deferred. No timeline has been given as to when the increase will be implemented. Several operators on Wednesday gathered at the Radio Jamaica compound on Lindhurst Road, insisting that they are not represented by transport operators, development sustainable services, and other taxi associations. President of the New Kingston Operators and Owners Association, Conroy Nesbeth, who represents more than 1,000 operators, told the news that the operators did not agree to the delay in the fare increase. Mr. Nesbitt chided prominent transport group leaders, Tonza President Egerton Newman and All Voice Transport Group President Lorraine Finnegan, adding that they do not represent us and that they don't speak for us. That Mr. Edgerton Newman and Mr. Finnegan does not represent us and they don't speak for us. Over the years, we've been misrepresented and uh, the cup full. So I am the one vice representative. And as you know, I represent for a small group in New Kingston also. Recently, it went out in the media that the taxi operators and bus operators agree with the government not to take the increase that was promised from last year. Now that the members are complaining and disgruntled right across the KMTR. And there's a statement like that came from Mr. Newman. He does not have to consult with anyone. And some other outrageous statement. We, we, we don't have all of them. Mark Barnett seeks a meeting to discuss a possible separation from NWC. The news has been informed that embattled president of the National Water Commission, Mark Barnett, has written to the NWC board requesting the commencement of discussions regarding his future at the utility company. Mr. Barnett, through his attorneys, has reported and requested that the parties commence discussions regarding his separation package from the Water Commission. Mr. Barnett's contract expires in 2026, and it is understood that the NWC board has been examining the amount of money to be included in the separation package. It is understood that the NWC board has not yet responded to the letter which was sent in January. Mr. Barnett was sent on administrative leave later last year following a report submitted by the Integrity Commission regarding a housing complex owned by Mr. Barnett and his wife, Annette Francis Barnett, at the Charlie Mountain Drive in St. Andrew. But the Director of Public Prosecutions ruled in January that the two cannot be prosecuted for breaching the environmental permit for their development as the time to do so had expired. Matthew Samuda, Minister with Responsibility for Water, speaking Wednesday at a post cabinet press briefing at the Jamaica House, said he is expecting an announcement soon on the future of Mr. Barnett at the NWC. PNP accuses government of arrogance and made apology demand for a former House clerk. The opposition People's National Party has accused the minister with responsibility for information, Robert Morgan, of being cross and arrogant in his response to queries regarding the controversial public letter of reprimand issued by House Speaker Juliet Hulness to former parliamentary clerk Valerie Curtis. The information minister's dismissive attitude is symptomatic of a government that has lost its way in serving the people crudely resisting accountability and flippantly dismissing the legitimate criticisms from a broader cross-section of media, civil society, unions, and the opposition about a matter which exposes a worrying tendency of misuse of power in the country, Shadow Minister of Information Nikisha Birchell said. That a pattern of abuse was exacerbated on Tuesday in Parliament when the government used its control of the House to bar the opposition from raising the issue. The government's refusal to answer the criticisms in this matter demonstrates blatant disregard for accountability and the transparency and is the antithesis of responsible governance, Birchall continued, adding this affair underscores this government's arrogance and the disrespect towards the Jamaican people. Ms. Valerie Curtis dedicated decades of her life in service to this country and it is deeply troubling to witness her being unjustly vilified on the eve of her retirement. She reiterated the opposition's call for the government to apologize to Curtis. It is imperative that the House Speaker shows appropriate contrition to rectify this injustice by withdrawing her offensive letter and offering a sincere public apology to Ms. Valerie Curtis. 
Anything short of this would be a betrayal of the principles of fairness, natural justice, and accountability that should guide our democracy, the release stated. Curtis, who retired on April 6, was publicly reprimanded a week earlier in a letter by House Speaker Juliet Holness for failing to comply with the ruling of the Speaker on the tabling of reports. The House Speaker had ruled in November last year that reports from the Auditor General's Department on public bodies would be tabled in keeping with Section 30 of the Financial Administration and Audit Act. The Speaker's letter was in relation to the two special audit reports of the Financial Services Commission and the Tax Administration Jamaica. The AGD had sent it to Parliament on December 28, 2023 and the January 29 this year, which the Speaker said were received in breach of the ruling she made in the House of Representatives on November 7, 2023.